All right, well, airline delays, folks. We've all been there, right? They're the bane of every traveler's existence. You're sitting on the plane. You're wondering how much longer it might be before takeoff. We've seen some extreme examples of passengers stranded on the tarmac as well. Back in 2007, weather delays at JFK in New York uh, left people trapped on a jet blue flight. This one really was one for the history books. Nine hours. Can you imagine sitting there for nine hours? Hours, and can you imagine what the plane was like after nine hours on the inside? So a group called Flyers Rights spent the past few years pushing Congress for a passenger's bill of rights. Joining me now, the group's executive director, Kate Hanai. She founded the group after spending more than eight hours on the tarmac. That was her inspiration, and that's quite understandable. Uh, with us also is Mark Orwall. He's an international, the international editor for Travel and Leisure magazine, which is great. Uh, magazine has a lot of good travel tips for us as well. So, Kate, let me start with you. I feel like we've heard about this over the, the last few years, you know, passengers' rights bills. Has anything actually changed? And, and, you know, where does it stand now? Can we expect any changes in the coming future? Well, nothing really has changed with the airlines. They have not changed their behavior uh, one iota related to these stranding events and holding people on the tarmac without uh, water, food, hygienic toilets, or temperature control. But we do have uh, a, a bill in Congress that's passed through the House. And this last week, we got extremely good news. And our entire language was uh, passed through the Senate Commerce Committee and is now well on its way to the floor. So it looks to me like this year we may actually have a meaningful airline passenger bill of rights that would let you off a plane. And, and during the time on the tarmac, uh, before they allow you off at three hours, they would need to provide you water, medicines, food, temperature control, hygienic right. toilets. So, that's, so basically basic it puts communities. a limit of three hours. It says three hours is a reasonable amount of time uh, to push that limit and also make sure that they're prepared to take care of everybody on the plane for that period of time. You said a, a passenger yep. can get off the plane. Under what circumstances? Well, uh, you know, if there's a medical event, they always send an ambulance out. But right, but I mean, short of that. Any, short of that, if a passenger needs off a plane at three hours, they'll be able to send a bus oh, out to three, the plane yeah. and okay. at three hours. But the pilot gets 30 minutes. If he thinks he can take off after that three-hour period, he gets one shot at an additional 30 minutes uh, to decide. Yeah. And, and if he doesn't, then at three and a half hours, it's a must yeah, let that, them off. You know, that sounds pretty reasonable, uh, Mark. Uh, you know, three yes. hours is a long time. Um, mm -hmm. But anything, you know, when you look at that famous JetBlue story, and I think if we want to pull up the full screen that shows some recent uh, incidences like this as well, people can look at it at home. Uh, even that pilot and that organization, JetBlue, said, you know what, we should have thrown in the towel a lot earlier that day. That's absolutely true. The airlines, however, will tell you that there are a lot of practical reasons why they might not be able to let passengers off. Perhaps there's not a gate that they can back into. If it's a mass delay, several planes on the tarmac, they may not have the portable staircases why and buses. Why not just roll a staircase over and get people on a van and take them out of there? Absolutely. They should, they right. should be willing to do that. They should be able to do that. Uh, and in fact, if it's three hours or more, they absolutely should do that. You, know, you have some good practical advice for people, and some of this I've already started doing on my own because I don't like to be without a snack for too long. you oh. got to bring something with you, right? You, better, you know, I tell, I, I tell people, you should plan for a, a plane ride the same way you would for a long car trip. Uh, you want to bring food and water with you in right. your car. You want to have some entertainment, whether it's you a book, crossword, puzzles, electronic games. And like I always tell my kids, go to the bathroom before you go into yeah. the car or get on the plane. Absolutely. In case you have to face that delay, you're going to be a little better prepared for it. All right. Yeah, Kate, uh, you know, one quick last thought from you on all of this. Do you feel, you know, you feel like we're getting somewhere with this, that, that the three-hour limit is reasonable and you're going to get it? As tough as, as it's been dealing with Congress and trying to get this done in a short term manner, yes, I think we're going to do it. It's been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears right. for us. Uh, and, and it's not easy, but yes, I do believe we're well, going to succeed this year and, and in a bipartisan you, manner. You Thank never you. know where life's going to take you, right? But if you hadn't ended up on that tarmac for eight hours, you would have had a different mission for the past few years, I bet. So. Uh, and, and, and I wish that, had I been stuck, I wish that there was an organization I could have called because we have a hotline for people now, but there was no one to call. And flyersrights.org is our website. All Everyone right. should go there. It's free. Um, yep. We give a lot of valuable you information. You can fight there. back. There's somebody to talk to. Thank you for providing that. Yep. Kate Hanna, thank you very much. Mark Orwell, thank you. Thank you. Good stuff. Thank you.